I was just wondering, like, when we played the show, you whispered something at the end of that first chorus. Do you remember what that was? At the end of the, what what song was that? In Milk Mind. It sounds yeah. like you're going, Fuck yeah. Yeah, something like that. Okay. Thanks for the information. That was helpful. I, I think I said, fuck yeah. <laughs> what got uh, into you there? Uh, you know, I just... Uh, I didn't, I just thought this concept might be too stupid uh, to really resonate with anyone. And when it yeah. was clear that, that they were really, uh, really into it, it, it uh, just got my juices flowing, I guess. Because it was not in the script. Like, I have the script, and I actually looked through it to prepare for this, and it was not in there. So that was an ad lib. <sighs> yeah. Um, were you, how did you, were you okay with that? It just came out. You know, I, I I didn't have, you know, I tried not to think a lot about it, but. Yeah, I mean, I just put a lot of work into the script. And for you to say something that I hadn't written, it was just a little. Sure. You know, it just felt very written, the script in some parts for me. And which is fine. I mean, it was written, you know, which that's fine. But I, I just, I had to give it a little more, make it more personal. It was a character yeah. choice. So you're saying what I wrote wasn't wasn't personal enough, in, in your opinion? Yeah, that's probably okay. ex exactly how I put it. Thank you. <laughs> Is it personal? Yeah. yeah. Right. So now we're getting into Act Two, maybe. Yeah, Act Two. Are you ready? Uh, no. It. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Okay. Here it is. <laughs> no one's watching the video at this point, anyways. That's true. Yeah, they probably if, stopped after the first round of technical difficulties. <laughs> if if you are if you've made it this long, send an email to all that milk at all that milk dot com and let us know. Oh, this, this is my second and final song. Yeah. Yes. Well, actually, well, you you played a a smaller role later on in the album in Cows in Heaven. That's right. Was it uh, my idea to what was that? To perform this song or bathroom? No, no, actually. This, I think that this song is. Um, I don't know. I got nothing good for that. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta know when to hold them and know when to fold them. So, um, no, we go ahead. Uh, no, I was just gonna say, like, I wanted to address the applause at the beginning of the song when when your character Cunningham hit the stage, Jordan. I actually kind of re resented it a little bit. Like, I know it sounds petty, but you know, I wrote the thing. If I'm the main character, but I you understand. got the big applause lines, and it was kind of hurtful in some ways. You just brought such a great toxic masculinity to the stage, and people ate it up. Thank you. Yeah, very toxic masculinity. That's kind of what I'm known for. Yeah. You know, my... I, I never thought of it as toxic, but the more I think about it, it probably is. I mean, yeah, you certainly have an aggressive male energy. Let's say... Yeah. I mean, we could and just sleep at time to re reflect on your male energy. Ugh. People know it's wrong. Absolutely. So Dustin's wife... Um, and also one of his bandmates from OK Linden performed the female vocals on this one. I was kind of curious how you were able to get, um, I know that Erica plays a lot with you, but how are you able to get Heather to join you on this track when she won't sing on your songs? Yeah, I, th I, I think that you must be the X Factor because, uh, that's never worked when I've tried. I just, yeah, I really have nothing colorful to add to that. She just won't do shit for me. Can you talk closer to your computer? Can, Steve, we can't hear you, man. I said I wonder if it's because of how demanding in particular he is. <laughs> Could you scoot back a little bit? <laughs> you know, not to be too controversial here, but I thought it was because he said he wouldn't ask for sex for his birthday this year. Toxic masculinity. That's all Jordan. 
A lot of this song was actually inspired by the cowbell sketch from Saturday Night Live. Did you know that? Because you need it. Yeah, need, like in this part that you're about to hear, you'll you'll hear it. You'll hear it right here. That sketch yeah. is so funny. Love this drum fill. Which is yeah, inspired a, by Tommy that's Rofe. A, that's a, uh, I'm doing a paradiddle there. But it oh, sounds like yeah. single strokes. But it's right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. You never know. I didn't. Is yeah. that, is that the code you enter on Nintendo to get straight to Mike Tyson? The paradiddle code. <laughs> Did you see any ghosts? Like, was it just in the green room, Steve, or was were there other places where you had like paranormal experiences? Well, you were up in the rafters for a, a portion of the show, weren't you, Steve? Yeah, we're looking down. There was a few things I needed to check. There were some, uh, there were some ghostly artifacts I'd left in there back in 2008, and I wanted to see, uh, I wanted to make sure they were still destroyed. Or at least, at the very least, still not active. They'll, they'll rebuild <laughs> they and work. they'll be stronger. I took yeah. care of them. <laughs> I love these instrumental bits where the audience claps all the way through. Uh, well, I just think they're going to stop clapping and well, they don't. It's like I, I dim the lights and the, there's a set change, you know, and they're just, they just keep going. It's when, crazy. I think once they see like the new set like coming out and then who's going to be a part of it, then they say, oh, it's, um, you yeah. know, oh, it's Garth again. Like, it's going to be another Garth song. And yeah. then they'll keep clapping or... Yeah, because right there, they started clapping because they see Noah walking. Yeah. Well, I was wearing very recognizable With, the, with the guitar. I know. And my wrist was really bad at this point. It was almost gone. Like, this was the yeah. only fraction I played. But most of the songs, I had uh, Brian backstage playing the guitar, and I was just kind of shadow playing. So that's my like wrist kind, of a, far gone. kind of like a Milli Vanilli kind of thing. Very much a Milli Vanilli. Like, if he would have messed up, I would have screwed. <laughs> yeah. Most people don't know you have ten tendons in your wrist, but you actually tore nine of them. You only had one tendon left in your wrist, didn't you? Yeah, I only had one tendon left, and it wasn't even the good one. It's yeah. not didn't, yeah, didn't Marilyn Manson remove some tendons from his wrist? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he jerk himself as a dick. Yeah. Uh, that's, I think that's exactly right. <laughs> we officially cannot show this to friends and family members now. <laughs> <laughs> Doing it again with his toxic masculinity jokes. <laughs> um, we're getting to another part that made me mad, but it's okay. What made you mad there? Um, so I was also, I, you know, I, I'm the keyboard player. Yeah. And, but I did not write this keyboard part. But everyone keeps telling me that this is one of their favorite parts. Oh. Uh, who wrote it? it? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, who wrote it down? Yeah. Well, Dustin came up with it, but I wrote it down. So I wrote it. <laughs> I wrote it. <laughs> I gotta, uh, I gotta say, this is my favorite it's the drumming on the record right here. Well, just hi hats and kick. We should talk over it so people can't hear it. Chord change. Great bass line. Bass line. There. Yeah, I'm, that's a highlight for me. This was the part. Rest of the song's not as just, you know. Well, I was gonna actually say this is like one of the most important parts to me. Because <laughs> this is the first. Yeah. This is the first part of this album that was written. Yeah, I'm glad me. it's important. I'm glad it's important to somebody. Somebody. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, Y'all thank you. Yeah. Well, we'll see how the audience comes for you. Yeah, I mean, listen for the clapping at the end to see how much they love it. Is what I would say. So uh, we're almost the end of golf. We're getting into uh, Josh's character, Blue, who was named after Paul Bunyan's Blue Ox. Hey. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's not named after, but... Uh -huh. Okay. Blue. I thought it was named after, but I, I thought the Ox was named but it was named after. It was so hard playing on stage at this time because of all the blood from 
seemed the very first song. Going back, we would have done that. Should have done that differently. Yeah, it was very slippery. <laughs> cleaned it up or had some, maybe used fake blood. I've seen some of those kind of spread streamers. Or yeah. it's kind of a it's silly, but it's kind of a neat effect. Yeah, yeah. I, it honestly would have saved money. But um, you know, That's once I ball. get an idea in my head, I gotta say that um, this is petty of me, but this is I'm the most jealous about not playing the drums on this song. Yeah. Uh, of any song, I, I I just wish I could. I wish yeah. I could. Well, it was a special song, so we wanted someone else to play the drums for it. That makes sense. That makes sense. Um, those cowbells you heard at the beginning, those are actual cowbells, not like musical, like actual bells off of actual cows. I got them from Equivet Veterinary Clinic in Oregonia, Ohio. Oh, right. My wife, Hannah, used to work as a vet tech there, so that was how I had the actual real cowbells. That was a really big score. That meant a lot to me. Did she sometimes have to put cows to sleep? Did you guys bond over that? Yeah. Well, she nursed them to sleep. My uh, urologist used to live in uh, Oregonia. Ooh, that bass. That bass. Yeah, that's Steve. Wipe. That's Steve. That's actually me. Thank you very much. It's Steve playing, but that was my idea. So I just want to let everyone know. Did you write it? Did you write it down? Yes. So Jordan, I got to play drums at the beginning of this song too. Yeah, but those weren't the good part. A couple, a couple of us got to. Yep. This is the good part. Right here. And we had a. Yeah. And we had a Guns N' Roses cover band playing as our backup band for this. The Slash um, Guy was incredible. The Slash Guy came out during that solo. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he was right. nicer than I thought he was going to be, too. Well, because he's, he's not actually Slash. Right. True. <laughs> but, I mean, have, you've met Slash guys before. True. So, not the best. Yeah. He wasn't That's... your stereotypical Slash guy, other than yeah. every, other than all of his looks. Uh, yeah, looking exactly, and, and I mean exactly like him. But Slash, if you don't know if you've seen Slash in a while, he looks like he's, <laughs> he looks like he's wearing a Slash mask. Uh, so it's <laughs> he does. <laughs> but that, that that guy's slash guitar playing was as good as his personality. Uh, oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> point, man. That's all I'm saying. It speaks for itself. So that's uh, the end of uh, Act Two here. The end of Act Two, uh, and here's where we get our third act villain, who was played by and inspired by Dustin. <laughs> 